My name is Irene Dundas. Um, my Tlingit name is Kahla Hla. I am Zakwedi Killer Whale. Um, and I'm Nehadi Yepke. I am the child of a Nehadi. Um, that's the highest honor that you can give to your father's people, saying that you are a child of his people. My mother is um, Lorraine Shields, and my father is the late Lawrence Shields or Wayne Shields of Saxman. Um, I am from Cake. I grew up in Saxman. So it's always wonderful um, being out on the water um, with Gloria. Good company, good company. The film crew, all of you guys are good company. Um, the captain. Um, I caught fish. Oh, look, I got two of them. It's just got like a whole gag on. Oh, nice, Irene! Oh, nice These rigs are fun for that reason, too. How hungry is everybody? I only eat <laughs> halibut. You only eat halibut? You yeah. will not eat rockfish? No. Nope. Are you sure? Just get them all. I don't eat rockfish. I caught some rock cod and I caught a hell of it. And um, I don't eat rock cod or rockfish. And so I kind of said to the world, I only eat hell of it. And um, as we're, you know, pulling up into the, the channel there and we set our, our lines down to catch a hell of it. And um, I caught a beautiful fish. I say it was um, now 50 pounds, but it really probably was only 40 pounds. And then Keenan says it's 20 pounds, but it was a beautiful fish. We, um, it was nice. We, you know, we ate some of that fish up on, at the camp, and that was uh, that was good. That was good food. I think that we stated it, and it came out, and um, stated it to the universe, and there was hell of it. You know, it's just so nice to be out here in this space. I think I just, you know, um, I appreciate the invitation by the Social Services Department. I'm the president of Ketchikan Indian Community right now, and so it's always fun to be with the staff and see what's going on and get excited about the wonderful programs and, and healing things that are happening all over the organization. And, you know, we're joined, of course, for the those of you, well, you all know that Irene is a former president of Ketchikan Indian Community and she um, works in the Cultural Resources Department now, but I just have to say that we have such talented people, but it's so nice to be here in this space. You know, uh, I think it was, what, three years ago that we really um, started to really appreciate this relationship uh, with Chuck. And, um, you know, during that time, uh, it just amazed me what volunteerism comes out of this organization um, because so many of our elders were enriched and fed um, and it was just so nice to have that because it was something they hadn't been able to experience and so I think you know during COVID you kind of lost your connection with all the people you wish you could have maintained your connection with so I think it's just really great to be here in this space getting to talk about medicines and plants and foraging and um, and be with people who are on a learning healing path and that are all just kind of sharing their knowledge and information and so um, Slingit, they don't like to leave songs dropping to the floor and while I'm uh, yeah. nobody's Slingit opposite here I, I think that I can call on Marcy and Ulop to come stand by me and, and we'll sing a song. Uh, we're Haida people who, uh, while we don't claim traditional ownership of this area, we traveled up and down in all sorts of areas and had fish camps and we have grown to love and respect our neighbors, uh, the people of this area um, the, here on Slingadani. And so uh, I think that we're being served food, so I think it's appropriate to feast song around, huh? Yeah. Shall we do the, um, I want to do the Skidigit women's version of the fee song. So traditionally, Haida's, we would sing this song when people are getting served their food, so it's perfect.
And if you know it, you're welcome to join us. Oh, he So out in Saxman, there are these two beautiful big cottonwood trees. Um, there's, they're both on the points. It almost is like they're the um, like the entry of Saxman, and then one probably maybe was at the exit of Saxman. But um, both trees were planted um, by Henry Denny Sr. Um, he is a takeaway of the Sonia Kwan, the Cape Fox Saxman people. And when he was a young man, he um, went up to the Eunuch River and he had um, gotten those two sap or gotten the two um, cottonwoods when they were saplings. And when the people moved from Cape Fox Village to Saxman, he planted those two saplings in Saxman. And so there's the, now, the two cottonwood trees, um, which are not native to Ketchikan, um, have two eagle nests in them. So um, they're big, beautiful trees. Um, and in the summertime, well, actually not even in the summer, well, it's probably um, fall, um, they have the cotton that just kind of lingers on a sunshiny day. It's so beautiful. But um, yes, those are in Saxman. They're really, really beautiful trees. Hmm? Oh gosh, look at all these berries. I like freak out every time. I see berries because there's so there's so many of them this year. I think it's because of the um, the the weather, the sun. Because last year we went and picked, there wasn't any. But we don't pick just along the sides. We really get into the bushes and really, really pick. I get bruised up. I get hurt, scratches, bug bites. And I'm a deathly, I'm deathly afraid of moths. I'm not afraid of moths when I'm berry picking. I'm like, oh, look at that orange one. And then I'll be like, oh, here we go. I get excited about picking. See, look. red one right there. Oh. I make like a get fruit cocktail and freeze it all and then I don't freeze the fruit cocktail um, the canned fruit cocktail and then unthaw the berries in a bowl with the co fruit cocktail on top of it and then slice up bananas and then usually with blueberries that's also um, at a potlatch 
that's like the main dessert. Everybody like waits for the salmon berry fruit cocktail blueberry mix. And they serve it in cups. And yeah, they're delicious. So anyways, our family is just berry pickers. We, uh, since I was a little, little, little girl, we've picked, picked berries. Um, um, my grandmother always picked berries. I think our whole family always picked berries. Um, I, I would go to cake in the summertime and then in winter, we would, I would live in Saxman and my dad is from Saxman. So we have a, my mom and my parents had a house in Saxman and then we'd go visit my grandma in cake. And um, cake is a really small village. Um, probably 1200 when I was a kid. Um, I don't know how big it is now, um, but we've always went berry picking. We'd go off uh, into a boat, go into probably about when we were seaweed picking too, um, or the end of seaweed um, season, we'd go berry picking. And it was just something we did. It wasn't, um, you know, this new thing that we're doing now. It was just something that was done. It was a part of our everyday life that this is what we we did during the summertime and during these months. Like I know on July 7th or on July 8th, 9th, 10th, that we will be going out berry picking because that's when the berries are the most ripe. So it's just something we do. My husband, my, um, my kids, well, my kids are away now, um, but my son was here, we'd all be berry picking. Um, my husband and I enjoy berry, enjoy berry picking and we will pick and pick and pick. Um, and a lot of the times we don't keep, I mean, this is the berries that we have here is for my son's, um, part of it's for his ceremony. And then I, we will gift some away. And then I probably will gift some to other ceremonies that they have throughout the winter um, as part of my donation to the family. A couple weeks ago, we went out to go look for sea asparagus and um, it was early, maybe, I don't know, maybe late April, um, early May, and we went out to look at for sea asparagus and we seen a pot of killer whales go, go by and, well, they were kind of off in the distance and there was a little, um, it looked like a little baby killer whale and then like maybe one that was, you know, a, a child or something. And then there was like a mother and maybe an aunt following it or following the two. And then um, we slowed the boat down and they were just passing by us. And, you know, it was really wonderful to see them. I mean, just to see just the small, you know, the little fin come up and we're like, oh my goodness sakes. And we got real quiet. And then um, two bigger killer whales, like a male. So the, the, the little pod was going away from us. And then the bigger male, and it might've been like a teenager, like passed by us like 10 feet, was right in front of us. And it was like, um, you need to stay back. That's what I felt it was. And I was, um, I mean, we were, I kind of got scared because those are big animals. And my grandmother used to put tobacco in the water. And I was like, oh no, I forgot the tobacco. And usually I have like tobacco on hand um, when we go into the, you know, when we're out on, out on the water. But I didn't have any tobacco that time and so, um, we just kind of crumpled up cookies and put them in the water and then we carried on. So when we went out this last time, um, last week, and there was um, the killer whales passed by, I remember to put the tobacco in the water um, just to give thanks that they, um, that killer whales, because they're a, a big animal, they're, you know, one of the largest um, sea creatures in the ocean and they hunt and just to give thanks that they do not um, kill humans and that they they you know that they're there they're friendly and so 
And it all, um, the killer whale is also my clan, um, my clan. So um, this is a killer whale spray that's on my hand. It's tattooed on my hand. And so it's also to give thanks and, and honor the killer whale that you know is in the ocean and that they don't want to you know harm us in any way. So um, that was really neat too. I mean, they just kind of hung around throughout the throughout our trip, and that was it was beautiful. Just being out on the water with friends and family, and um, there is like a togetherness. Um, you know, we, we talk about things that we don't normally, you know, maybe talk about in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, it's more relaxed and it's a beautiful, we're in a beautiful environment. Um, Alaska's beautiful, Southeast Alaska's beautiful, but Ketchikan, I think, is really beautiful. And um, just being out together and sharing stories or just even the experience of of um, getting to know each other and to um, learn more about one another, even though you might see them every day, or um, I see Gloria all the time and I see Ulop, but just to, you know, the um, even the jokes or, or even the stories or what we're sharing in our day-to-day -day life, just to know about one another more, I think is great. Um, and it's kind of peaceful. It's peaceful here in the ocean, um, being out in the woods when we were when we were gathering. Um, that was nice. I mean, all the birds and this this time of year is beautiful. You hear all the well. I have a favorite bird. It comes up in um, in June, and so I listen for my bird when it you know in the woods and. And then I get to share with other people, you know, the name of it. I know a little bit about, I'm not a birder, but I do know a little bit about it, um, to share that information so that other people can hear it or listen for it in the, in the summertime. Um, so it, I think it's just a, it's a great time to be with people and um, share what I know.